Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the women, all the moms, not all the women, but <laughs> the moms. We're going to be looking at a very familiar passage, so we're not going to delve into anything new. I sense that you guys might want to uh, go home and celebrate with the moms afterwards, so uh, we'll, cons we'll take that into consideration. And for those who are online, happy Mother's Day to you all. And I want to do a shout out to my own mom. Mom, I know you're at home watching. Happy Mother's Day to you, mom. Just know that I love you and we love you and we're praying for your health. So as you recover and get stronger, just know that I'm grateful for all the things that you've taught me throughout the years. But for now, we're going to get into God's word and we're going to look at the two sisters and going to look, revisit the two sisters and see what we can learn or observe today. Hopefully pick up a point, an, an extra kernel of truth that we didn't see last time we were here. But for now, let me just share some verses that are very customary here in, in uh, Church of Hope. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. A moment of silence is customary here so that we can exercise 1 John 1, 9 if we need it, which says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We do this, of course, to restore the filling ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, where the scripture talks about not grieving nor quenching the Spirit of God. And when we do then we're out of fellowship, thus we're now operating in the realm of the human energy, uh, fleshly energy, which amounts to wood, hay, and stubble, as opposed to gold, silver, and precious stone. So let's pause for a moment of silence, and then I'll pray. Father, once again, we are grateful for this time and where we can assemble together, and we're thankful that we can recognize the mothers all around the world, especially here in our church, and for those who are home, not able to attend church, whether Church of Hope is their own church or they can't attend their own personal church, we are thankful that they can join us online and to be ministered to through the Word of God. And so if you're listening and this is your first time, I hope and trust that this would be edifying to your soul because you as a mother have a very important responsibility before the Lord. And I'm going to prioritize, we're going to look at the Word of God, which shows what the priority in life is really all about based on the, uh, what had transpired between two sisters as found in Scripture. We ask and pray all of these things through Christ's matchless name in which we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's see if I can get the slide up here. So the title is Mother's Day 2022. Who are, who are moms here? Brenda, Tess, Nanette, Sarah, Corrine. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. And we're going to be looking about at the prioritiz prioritizing that good part. Do you guys remember what that good part was? Taken from Luke 10, you should, we're going to have another look at the sisters. Taken from Luke chapter 10. So, And pay close attention because I had noticed a few things here that I thought were important. And Deacon Morris, is he? There he is. You, you have your Bible? Yeah, um, I'm going to need your help. So now it happened. As they went, 
that they entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Would you kindly read Luke chapter 10, verse 1, Deacon Morris, and Luke 10, verse 17? Who are the they referring to? Let's put it in context. Very good. And verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Very good. So how many were there? More than a dozen. More than a dozen. We tend to think of the 12 disciples, right? They. So now it happened as they. Who are the they referring to? The 70. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So, the first box there. Luke doesn't identify the village. Did you notice that? It's just called a certain village. No specifics. What does that tell you? Here on the second box, here on the bottom, those following online, you can see it as well. It appears that God the Holy Spirit is interested in us learning something very important about what is about to transpire rather than us knowing where it took place. So he's not interested in showing us where it was. He's not saying it's in Aliso Viejo. He just said a certain village. But notice a certain woman is named. The, the woman is named Martha and we're going to discover later on Another woman is named, and it's her sister, Mary. So the first thing off the bat is, number one, before we get into the discussion between the two sisters, I want you to see what was overwhelming Martha to begin with. You've had visitors come over, right? You know how it is to try to be hospitable to your guests. Imagine having, having 70 at your house. And that's why I had Deacon Morris read the opening of Luke chapter 10, as well as in verse 17, to show us who the they refer to. And interestingly enough, I'd, among, among all my commentaries, no one makes reference to this. They just, it just flows into Martha and Mary. But I think that's important for us to know, because now we'll understand why Martha was frazzled at her sister getting mad at Jesus for not, uh, you know, he, she thought that he didn't care and letting her sister just listen to him and that kind of thing. We'll see that in a moment. So I just want to paint the context and show you that there were more than just Jesus and his 12, that they refer to at least 70. The number 70 is found in Luke 10, 1, Luke 10, 17. So as it happened, they, the 70, that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. The next verse. And she had a sister. Here's the introduction to the other woman. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Who are Martha and Mary, and what do we know about them? Here's what we know. They're sisters of Lazarus, correct? This is found in John chapter 11, verse 2. They're also close friends loved by Jesus. You find that in John eleven three. 3. Mary anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume in her home in Bethany. You find this in John chapter 12, verse 3. But this is not the same woman, it's not the sinful woman who anointed Jesus' feet at the Pharisee's house in Galilee in Luke chapter 7. That's a completely different woman altogether. So that's what we know about the Martha and Mary. They're sisters of Lazarus, close friends, loved by Jesus. And Mary, at one point, anointed Jesus' feet with expensive perfume in her home in Bethany, according to John 12, 3. 
and it's to be distinguished from the woman who was anointing Jesus' feet at the Pharisee's house in, in Luke chapter 7 at the house of Galilee. Verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. What distracted Martha? Anyone see what was the one that caused her to be distracted? Hmm? Serving. Serving Serving who? The The 70, as well as who? Who's the key person here? She was distracted serving Jesus. So it is possible to be distracted with serving God. But the context here, of course, is it includes the 70. But I want you to see that Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Here's this idea of I'm, I'm all by myself. So now she gets angry and tells the second person of the Trinity to tell him to get off her butt to help her. How easy was it for Mary to concentrate on Jesus' words? What was Mary doing? She was sitting at the feet of Jesus, right? So it was easy for her to concentrate on what he was saying. So one was serving Jesus and one was sitting next to Jesus. Do you see the picture, right? One is serving Jesus, getting the adobo, the pancit. Lord, you know, you must be hungry, and all your men must be hungry too. Is there anything wrong with serving Jesus? No. But keep that in mind. She was distracted with a whole lot of serving. It's not a sin to be serving, but we're going to see something in just a moment. So she's busy and distracted with much serving. That's when she complains to Jesus. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? I'm all by myself. And she's just sitting there listening to you. Now she's attacking her sister as if that's a bad thing. That's part of being hospitable, by the way. Not leaving your guest alone. What does 41 say? That leads us to 41. Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Have you ever been troubled and worried about many things in life? One thing, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. That's 42. So now let's zoom in. The passage is very small, but it's packed with lots of truths here that I want to highlight for you moms, and this applies to us men as well, but worth bringing out. Some points of observation. Notice. Number one, this passage is a warning to believers who are too busy. Too busy in life, worried and troubled about many things, and too busy in serving Him. Sometimes we could get caught up with being so involved with ministry that it gets to the point that it affects what? What was it affecting? Anyone know? Did you catch it? You're worried and troubled about many things in life, especially serving him. I've got to serve him. I've got to go to church. got to do this, got to do that. But 
it affected that good part. What is that good part? Fellowship. That's right. So let's zoom in and let's tighten it up a little bit. When too busy, Martha wrongly judged Mary's inaction and worries too much about what others are doing, not doing, and not doing, while at the same time getting upset at God the Son. Ooh, are we guilty of that? Do we ever get so uptight that it spills over and bubbles over and it affects our relationships around us? We're so busy and we're so involved, and I notice I made the distinction here, that not only are we busy and worried in life, but we're also busy serving Him, neglecting fellowship with Him. How can I say fellowship with God? Because Mary chose that good part, and Mary was listening to Jesus. That's called fellowship. That's called spending time with Christ. Some circles, that's called devotion. Our devotions, our time with God, it's got to be balanced out, moms. Otherwise, we're going to be judging others. They're in action. Look at her. Tell her to get off her beep and help me. Beep. Fill in the blanks. She was judging her sister who happened to be listening to Jesus as if that's a bad thing. Let's tighten it up even a little bit more. What we do with Christ is more important than what we do for Christ. Huh? Let me repeat that slowly. What we do with Christ is more important than what we do for Christ. Does that make sense? Do you guys hear what I'm saying here? What we do with him is far more important than what we do for Christ. You can knock on doors all day sharing the gospel. I'm not saying that that's not important, but what we do with him, spending time with him, is far more important than what we do for Christ. It's only through the inculcation of Bible doctrine or God's word which will guide us to obedience. How are you going to ever know what God expects from you and what he wants unless you sit down and listen to him? You can't know what he's going to say or what he promises and what he suggests or what he expects from you unless you listen to him through his word, which is that good part. It applies to all the moms who are very, very busy, who are doing a phenomenal job. I know my wife is a multitasker, and she does all kinds of things. And she does so much, and, you know, at the same time, she's guarded with her time with God. I, I know she's constantly listening to sermons and messages, and so I appreciate the fact that she takes that into consideration and applies it in her own life. Now, continuing on, Christ exalts fellowship with him to a very high place of excellence. The better part is to be preoccupied with him and not to neglect him. Mary was occupied with Christ, whereas Martha was preoccupied with self. So please note this, okay? What we do with Christ is more important than what we do for Christ. It's only through the inculcation of doctrine which, we, which will guide us to obedience. This is why so many Christians many times don't know what to do with their life they don't know what, what's right or wrong anymore because they don't have the time invested in the Word of God. And when that's the case, they will spiral downwards towards their sin nature and they will live based on feelings alone. Christ exalts fellowship with Him 
to a very high place of excellence. The better part is to be preoccupied with him and not to neglect him. Mary was occupied with Christ, whereas Martha was preoccupied with self, and it caused her to, to be angry at her own sister. So moms, if you're listening online or if you're here and you're listening, please remember that that good part involves spending time with God. You can be busy, but don't ever be too busy for God. You've got to balance it out. And make sure you have, you're have you logging in time with God and listening to his word, not music. Music is fine, but God's word is the only thing that's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That is what Mary was listening to, not music. She was listening to God's word. So if you have an audio Bible, that's a great thing to listen to. You can hit play and listen to the word of God in audio format, or you could just read the Word of God. It would be the same thing as listening to the Word himself, Jesus Christ. So that's it for today. It's short and sweet, but loaded with some key things that I hope all of you can walk away, men and women, to walk away with the importance of putting God first, that good part. Jesus called it that good part, which will not be removed from Mary. And he elevates fellowship with time with him above serving him. So you could be busy in church. If you're listening online, you could be so busy with church that you neglect your own study time with God. And if you do, don't be surprised if you're going to be frustrated and angry and short and irritable and just out of balance because you're not spending enough time with God. Mary spent the time with God and she was um, approved by Jesus himself. And she continued to listen to him. And it was Martha who was uh, kind of uh, gently rebuked, saying, you know, you're worried and troubled about many things. There's only one thing you should be concerned with, and that's what I say. You should be listening to me like your sister. He didn't say that, but that's what's implied. You should be sitting down here listening to me rather than serving me the sandwiches. Because so that's more important. That's what you get when you look at Luke chapter 10. And so we will close on this note and we'll partake in some refreshments after this. Father, thank you as always for giving us this opportunity to examine your word. And though it is a, a passage that we've seen in the past, we do recognize, Father, that we're able to still find some truths that are there hidden Sometimes we just don't see it the first or second time we hit it, but sometimes it's the third time that we hit it and we come across certain kernels of truth, such as the importance of how we should stress time with you, fellowship with you, over serving you. So I hope and trust, Lord, that those who are listening online or here, even here in person would recognize that it is possible to be too busy in life itself. And when that happens and we don't balance it out with adequate time with you, then we should not be surprised if we get mad at you and mad at others and start judging others and wondering why they're doing what they're doing when in fact they are troubled and worried about many things which could be curbed with time with you because it's only through spending time with you that we are transformed. It's only spending time with you that we are encouraged and exhorted we are reminded that there is a peace that surpasses all understanding that comes as a result of coming to you in much prayer with thanksgiving and then we would be flooded with a peace and a stability that will allow us to face the challenges of life regardless of what's around us with boldness recognizing that our hands our lives are in your hands and as such we have nothing to worry about and for those who have the COVID, I know we prayed about this earlier. I'm thinking of Deacon Don, Deacon Winston, Deacon Fred, and my mom who is all at home, my sister and her son, and Father Christine Gomez and others who are home. And I'm sure there are others that I have not mentioned but were mentioned earlier. We lift them up to you and we trust, Father, that as they are home resting, that they would rest in you, they would faith rest they would extend their faith towards you and rest in your promises which says that you will cause all things 
to work together for good because they love you. And as their church, we pray for them. We lift up our shields and lock them together, trusting, Father, that you will hear our prayers and touch them with your healing hand and allow them to recover and heal rapidly. We think of Theta as well, who, um, although the surgery was successful, her right foot, her right leg is still in pain. And so we lift her up to you and ask, Lord, that you would just uh, expedite the healing, whatever is causing her pain. Father, would you deal with that in a way that only the great physician can deal with it? We lift her up to you and look forward to the day that she can rejoin us and uh, resume the fellowship that uh, takes place here in Church of Hope. And for those of us who are just regularly attending, who are not sick, Father, I pray that you would continue <coughs> to place a, a wall of fire around each person that's here. Keep them all safe and protect them from the COVID and any variants that are out there, Father. I've been saying this now for two years, and I just trust, Father, that you are more powerful than anything that's floating around in this air. And just keep them safe, those who are nurses like Ron Ron and Katriana and others who are nurses in the medical field, I ask that you would shield them and allow them to take care of the patients while at the same time they themselves are being protected by your hand. Place that invisible wall of fire the way that you did with Israel. And uh, we trust, Father, that you'll protect us so that we can continue to meet whether digitally or face-to-face, -face, Father, because you alone are worthy. You're worthy of our time and our commitment to you. And, Father, we know that the world is in shambles right now, and the only way that this world is going to ever have a chance with getting stability back in life is to put balance in their life, and that is by starting with you. If they don't have a relationship with you, then, Lord, then they're headed down that path that is wide that talks about the eternal separation and father our our desire is your desire we our desire is that none should perish because you had uttered those words in your in the new testament so father uh, get creating us a boldness that would allow us to step out in faith and talk to people who are not believers yet just at least plant the seed whether by action or by words so that they too would uh, be open and receptive to the Lord Jesus Christ when that appropriate time comes. But I pray for all of us, Lord, that we would have a boldness because you didn't give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And Father, as we, my wife and I, prepare for this embarkment to the East Coast, I pray, Lord, that the Church of Hope would remain focused and stable, grounded in your word, because as I've been saying for since the early 90s, we are to be steadfast in the word. That's the only way to get things done. And it's through the application, the inculcation of your word, coupled with the application of the word, pow empowered by God, the Holy Spirit. We love you and we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to spend time together during this uh, marvelous Mother's Day 2022. And for the moms who are listening online for the first time, I wish you a happy Mother's Day. And I hope and trust that the message was edifying to you and meaningful to you. And if you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can take care of that right now, even as we're closing in prayer. The Bible says he loves you. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, he who believes in me has everlasting life. So if you're a mom who's listening for the first time and you don't know where you stand with God, you can believe in him for everlasting life right now. It doesn't mean that you have to come here literally and join this church or any church. You just have to join him. Receive the gift that's given to those who would simply receive it. So if you do that, just message me and I'll send you some material on how you can grow in your new relationship with him. We thank you, Father, once again for this time. We ask that you will bless the refreshments, the food that we're about to partake in, and again, keep us all safe from whatever is out there that's uh, affecting those and compromising their health. But protect us, Father, so that we would not be a part of that statistic. We ask and pray all of this in Christ's matchless name. Amen.